You can tell the boss that these jewels came from one of the oldest families in the country. They're tough to get hold of, and I want plenty of jack for them. You're doing all right, ain't you? All you got to do is get the stuff. Where would you be if we couldn't find a market for it in the States? And where would you be if I didn't handle the Russell stock? Well, trading gab isn't getting us nothing. I'm rolling. You tell him what I said anyhow. Sure. I'll tell him. And I never saw her from that day to this. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, babe. Why didn't you get here before sunup? I've been expecting Whiskey Wiley. He ought to be here now. McGee was figuring careful. Wanted us to loaf around and drift off easy. Well, maybe that's smart and maybe it ain't. McGee says he wants more jack for that bunch. Well, he does, does he? You tell him if he ain't satisfied with this setup, get somebody else to peddle this stuff. All right. I get moving. I said I'm working for Blackie here. Hey? I said I'm working for Blackie here. Oh, I thought you said you were driving the team for a trading post. Well, I am. Don't make sense. How can you be driving the team and working for Blackie at the same time? Well, don't you see that? Had enough whiskey. Go on out. Now listen to me. I want to see Blackie. I want my money. Got him across to McGee last night. What about the sheriff? Steered him over watching the Triple X outfit, where nothing happened. Whiskey's out there shooting off his mouth. Dirk again, huh? What's he saying? Better come out and see for yourself. You know, partner, I got a chance to buy a trading post. That's why I want my money. You're going to spend it all in one place, you say? No, no, I got a chance to buy a trading post. Look, you put them up about six foot and run five strands of fire, they almost be hog tight. I said I got a chance to buy a trading post. 
driving post. How high? Ah, you... Why don't you want to build a place for? Get behind the bar. I'll take care of him. Knox. When whiskey gets out of town, you know what to do. All right, buddy. You stay sober on the job. Now get out of here. Come on, get out. Of here. What's the matter, partner? This town doesn't seem to be very sociable. Uh, I'll get even with you for this. You know, that ain't a very smart way to treat your customers. I'll move on. What'd you say? I said get out. What? Heard me. Come out and fight like a man. Hey? <laughs> Business doesn't seem to be so good at the palace. Customers all coming out. Nobody going in. <laughs> You're coming in, ain't you? And I'm buying a drink. Lucky. Have you forgotten that you promised to take me to your new claim? No, I know I'm a little late, sweet, but I didn't forget. Now, you run along to the stable and tell him to hitch the buckboard, and I'll be right along. I'll be waiting. Come on in. What do you have? Sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla? Just getting to town? Yep. Looking for anyone in particular? Oh, no one in particular. If I can find the right kind of a spread, I might settle here. Here's your sarsaparilla. Thanks. Well, here's looking at you. Here's looking at you. <clears throat> oh, uh, was that the missus outside? Why? Couldn't help but notice the brooch she was wearing. What's the matter with it? Nothing. It's quite a rare piece of Mexican jewelry. Yeah? How do you know? I've seen a, quite a lot of it in my travels. But she wouldn't happen to have the mate to it, would she? Why? I've got a girl that would like to have one just like it. Yeah, there's no mate to it, brother. And as you just said, you've seen a lot of it in your travels. I'd suggest you do just that. Travel. Further south, if you're looking for a spread. This is mostly mining country around here. Thanks. Yes, that could be. But down in my country, they treat you like a man until they find out different. Up here, they throw you out to start with. Yeah, and you're just about as sociable as the rest of them. How long have you been in Mesa City? Well, I've been here long enough to find out that we ought to trail that old man, Whiskey Wiley. He knows more than I've been able to find out. Although I did learn that he's working for a trading post northeast of here. Well, if he didn't go northeast, he headed west into the canyon. I think it's best that you meet up with him. After being thrown out of the saloon, he'll talk to you freely. I'll be close by. That's a good idea.
Watch him, Sandy. I'm going after the wagon. Killer back there is finished. It's as unfortunate old fellow is, too. Well, what are our plans now, son? Well, to begin with, we should take this wagon into the trading post and land the job as a driver. But not until morning. That'll give me a chance to get set myself. Well, well I'm going to tell the owner. You can figure that out on the way. I wish Benita could always be as peaceful, like Pedro's song. I wish so too, Joe. You know how worried I am about you being out here alone at night with just the old squaw? We won't be alone. Whiskey will be coming along shortly with the supply wagon. But Whiskey's so old. He's no help in times like these. The rustlers raiding the ranches right and left. Suppose those hombres took a notion to raid this place some night. There's nothing I can do about it, Joe. I couldn't close up and leave my friends the Navajos. No place to trade. You could marry me. And, well, we'd find somehow to keep the post open. At least I'd know you had a home at the ranch and you were... You've gone over that so often, Joe. You wouldn't be happy with that kind of an arrangement, and neither would I. Perhaps someday someone will come along and buy this place. I told Whiskey when he was in Mesa City today to put out the word that I wanted to sell. When that happens, honey, we can get married, can't we? You know, waiting around for you is kind of growing on me anyhow. Let's go home now. Very good supper. Gracias, senorita. Your song is very good, too, Pedro. And gracias, senorita. Adios. Adios. Pedro, you knew the ranchers put up reward money for the information about the rustlers. Si, sí, I know. I look out. Adios. Adios. My foreman must have gone right over to the ranch from Mesa City. Maybe he ran across Whiskey in town and is riding back with him. Not Steve Rowland. He likes to travel fast. You know, he's one of the best foremen I've ever had. It was a smart idea of his to ride over to Mesa City to see Sheriff Halloway. If you ask me, as the United States Marshal, you should look to for help. I suggested to Steve the other day, and he laughed at me. No, honey. You don't like Steve because he's a little rough. He didn't mean nothing except Washington's a big place, and it's got lots of troubles. He doesn't got time for little folks like us. Watch yourself, honey, and look out for strangers. I will. And I can always ring the bell and bring Mama Dee's son up from the Pueblo if I have any trouble. So stop worrying. Hello and love never stops worrying. Night, honey. Good night.
I wonder what's happened to Whiskey. He's never been this late before. Maybe he's drunk again. No, he promised me he wouldn't. Why well, late, boss? Who is it? Jack McKenzie, ma'am. I'm a stranger in these parts. Are you Miss Bain? Yes, but I don't cater to strangers knocking on my door at this time of the night. I was hoping you might allow me to rest my horse and get some sleep. In the morning, I'd like to talk over some business with you. Business? Thank you, ma'am. Just a minute. Explain what you want. Well, I don't blame you for being cautious in an open country like this. But all I want is just a place to sleep. You said you had some business to talk over with me. What is it? I heard in Mesa City today that you wanted to sell this place. Well, I might be interested if uh, you'd give me a couple of days to look it over. I do want to sell, but to a party that the Navajos will accept, too. And that's right, miss. That's what I meant by looking the place over. I'd like to get acquainted with them, too. That is, if we can make a deal. But I reckon that can wait till morning. Well, I guess it'll be all right. Mama D, get some blankets. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. It's you, Steve. Joe didn't think you'd be coming by this way this late, so he went on home. Who's the stranger? I'm letting him put up in the stable for the night. Oh, you are, huh? Senor! It's blanket. Thank you, Mama D. Steve Rellin. Good night. Good night. You're not bedding down here, stranger. But you are piling on that horse and coming along with me. Steve Rellin, you put that gun away and mind your own business. Now let him go ahead, miss. I want to hear what he has to say. You know what we think of strangers loafing around on this range, Benita. And I think the ranchers will be mighty interested in questioning this one. Did you say ranchers? Yeah, who else would be interested in the wrestling going on around here? It seems to me you're doing an awful lot of talking in front of this young lady. And I'm backing that talk up, too. Steve! got just what he deserved. Pick up that gun. Now, Steve Rillen, you get back to your own range business and leave my affairs alone. Mr. McKenzie is here to buy this post. Now you'll go and worry Joe about your being here. Joe Roskins is the owner of the Circle J outfit. Steve Rollins is new foreman and thinks he can boss everybody else's business. But you forget that and get your rest, Mr. McKenzie. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Dead, laying in the road. Yeah? And no sign of Whiskey Wiley. Blackie's out of town with Rose. That dame again, that's all he thinks about. Another thing, I came by the post and found Benita putting up a stranger for the night. Calls himself Mackenzie. I tried to take him, but he's tricky and he's fast. But he won't get off so lucky the next time I meet up with him. Benita says he's buying the place and ordered me off. Well, where's Joe? He rode over to the Triple X. Where's your boys? Waiting for me up in Box Canyon. Now we gotta work fast. Round up the rest of that cattle and get them across. McGee will be waiting for you. See Joe in the morning. Now you know what to say. Then meet me up here alone. I get you. Finished.
That was a mighty fine breakfast. Gracias, senor. Oh, by the way, who is the George Bain out there on the signpost? Little boss, a bigger brother, is died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mama D, you're some cook. Gracias, senor. Muy buen hombre. Thank you. Thanks for the nice breakfast, Miss Dean. Mama D goes with the post, too, Mr. McKenzie. Well, that's an added inducement. You've got a lot of nice pottery here. We have a lot of that. This is an odd piece of Indian work. It is, but an Indian didn't make it. It was made by a white man. A white man? You mean a, a squaw man? No, he, he lives alone in an old hogan near the mouth of the Box Canyon. He's called Tough Harsh, but he's more peculiar than tough. Peculiar? He doesn't like people. He doesn't talk to them very much. He learned to make pottery from the Navajos and keeps pretty busy at it. Well, he sounds kind of interesting. I think I'll ride over and have a look at him. Hey, Bob, this whiskey's coming in a wagon. It's about time. He's my wagon man and helper, Mr. McKenzie. It looks like my wagon, but not my helper. Hey, Ma'am, you the boss of this outfit? Yes, where's my driver? What happened to him? I'm sorry, Ma'am. You'll have to speak a mite louder. Where's my driver? What happened to him? He's in the back of the wagon. He's dead. Shot clean through the heart. Dead? No, no, querida. I look him. Ben, hijo. Ben! No, I found him about halfway out of Mesa City, about sunup. Looked like he might have been dead quite a spell. Maybe it happened yesterday. But why? Who would want to kill Whiskey? I don't know, ma'am. Uh, who are you, stranger? Come again, Bob. Who are you? That's allowed. You know, my name is Hopkins. Sandy Hopkins. I just come up from Texas. I was running the freight outfit of my own, but there's so much grief attached to it, I made up my mind to sell it and come up here and try and get a job. Where in blazes were you last night? I stayed at the Triple X Ranch. Why? What happened? Plenty. Rustlers cut our new fence and run off the whole bunch. Somebody must have spotted us when we moved them in there yesterday. I'm sorry, Joe, but we ain't got enough riders to be every place. There's something else you ought to know. It's got me puzzled. What? When I dropped by the post early last night, Benita was putting up a stranger. A stranger? Yeah. I got suspicious and was going to turn him into the ranches for questioning. But Benita stopped me. He's a kind of a handsome cuss. I guess he's pulling the wool over her eyes plenty. Anyhow, she run me off. Told me to mind my own business. You know, miss, if you'd be looking for a driver now, I'd like to apply for the job. He looks like he's honest. He brought your wagon in with all the store goods. What'd you say? If you want the job, I guess you can have it. Oh, you don't say. Well, thank you, miss. Thank you. You can unload the stuff and bring it inside. What's that? You can unload the stuff and bring it inside. I'll get it done right away. I'll give him a hand. Thanks. Looks like we're doing all right up to now. So far, so good. Check with me tonight when I get back. Right. <clears throat> this is Benita. She inside. Just put it down anywhere, Mr. McKenzie. Who are you? You'll have to come again, Bob. I'm a little hard of hearing. Who are you? Oh, I'm Sandy Hopkins, the new driver for this outfit. How often do you have to get your supplies? Oh, about once every month. 
Well, where do you deliver your powder to? To Mesa City, the same place I pick up my supplies. I see. Joe! Are you the stranger who put up here last night? Yes. Get him up! You're gonna do some explaining. Who you are, where you're from, and what are you doing in this part of the country? You're coming along with me, stranger. Sure, I'll go with you, if that's what you want. I'm sorry to cause you so much trouble, Miss Bain. You better take care of this before somebody gets hurt. No, Joe, wait. I'm going to visit the man who makes potter for this girl. So keep your eyes open and meet me like I said. all that, Joe, but I just can't believe that Mr. McKenzie had anything to do with that rustling last night. How do you know he didn't slip out of the barn last night when you were asleep? I didn't go to sleep until late, and besides, Mr. McKenzie came here to buy this place. To buy the place? Very funny. Where did he hear about it being for sale? In Mesa City, through whiskey. And you said whiskey was killed on his way here. Don't you see, honey, you can't take chances with strangers at all these days. When rustlers are operating like this low-down bunch, they just don't stop at rustling, do they? No, I guess not. I'm so mixed up and worried. I wish you wouldn't take so many chances, Joe. I don't trust this, Steve, even if you do. I'll get that out of your pretty head. If that stranger shows around here again, send the deaf man after me. There's a stranger coming this way. Get back and lay low. Howdy. Are you Mr. Harsh? Yes, I'm Harsh. Since you know my name, I reckon you know I don't like folks, especially strangers coming around my place. My name's Jack McKenzie. I'm stopping at the trading post for a few days. Miss Bain showed me some of your pottery. Mighty good stuff. Maybe Miss Bain forgot to tell you there's secrets about making this pottery, and I don't want anybody to know them. Well, I don't aim to go into the pottery business, Mr. Harsh, so your secret is safe. But I am planning on buying the trading post. So I'll be handling some of this pottery for you. That is, if Miss Bain and I can get together. There ain't gonna be no more pottery. Because I'm closing up. Oh, sorry to hear that. I'll be seeing you. Something is KY. Whiskey died all right. The little deaf fellow just brought him and his wagon into the post. Well, I don't see why Blackie didn't take care of him in his territory. Now we got a deaf guy to worry about. And the stranger who called himself McKenzie. And I don't like Knox being killed and not knowing who killed him. And we gotta work fast. Get the rest of that Circle J cattle over to McGee tonight. 
Bring back what stuff he's got with you. I'll take care of things from now on. I got a new idea how I'll handle this. Sounds all right, but where do I come in? You're in. Now do as I tell you. All right. Oh, uh, madam. Where do you want me to put this stuff? Hey? Oh. Habla usted uh, español? Si, sí, señor. All right. And where do I put the stuff? En la sala, la cocina, donde usted quiera, como le dé la gana y como usted quiera. No fooling. Huh? Lil boss, no me entiende este hombre. Take the wagon over there and hey, unload... just a moment. Take the wagon over there and unload the stuff in the storehouse. And when you're through, I want you to go see Mr. Harsh. I'll give you an order explaining that you're the new man working for me. Yes. Tell him that you'll be up there tomorrow morning with the wagon to pick up the pottery for Mesa City. Yes, I'll do that. Now tell me, uh, how do I find the place? You can't miss it. You take the first wagon trail off of the main road. Yes. It leads right down to Harsh's Hogan. All right, I think I can find it all right. Miss Bonita, stranger, he come. I'm sorry, Mr. McKenzie, but you'll have to leave here. I'm your friend. I'd like to speak to George. Not now. You must go. Steve's told several of the ranchers that you know something about this rustling going on around here. And Joe thinks so, too. That's right, miss. I do know something about the rustling. But I don't want to cause you any more trouble. So I'm pulling out tonight. Thanks for everything. Get Steve and tell him I want this fellow McKenzie out of this territory by tomorrow. I don't care how he does it. Bring Ed and Shorty back with you. Just as you say. morning. What do you want? I didn't hear that. I said, what do you want? Oh, is your name Harsh? Who are you? What'd you say? Yes, I'm Harsh. Oh, well, I'm Sandy Hopkins, Miss Benita's new driver. He sent you that note. Miss Benita said for you to have that pottery order for Mesa City ready, and I'd pick it up the first thing tomorrow morning. Tell Miss Benita I'll have them ready. I couldn't quite get that. I said, tell Miss Benita I'll have them ready. Yes, sir. I'll tell her exactly what you said, Mr. What'd you say your name was? Harsh. Harsh. I'll see you again, Mr. Harsh. Good morning. soon find out if he's deaf. Now you get to Steve like I told you.
Pretty smart, Sandy. Well, they are. So far, we're doing all right. But how are we going to tie these loose ends together? We're going to take some long chances tonight, Sandy, and time's against us. There it is, Sandy, as plain as day. Red, get those strays out of the wash. The boss don't want one of them left. I'll tail off and follow the herd when we get to the line. I'll get it done. You circle to the right, cut back. I want to get acquainted with that foreman. Sure been blind as a bat. Get Joe to the trading post. That's the nearest and safest place. Do whatever you can for him. Querida mía, go and sit down, please. Joe would only have listened to me. Well, it could be worse. And it could have happened sooner. But Marvin D knows what to do, and with your help, I'm sure he'll pull through all right. I'm so confused. You're not as deaf as you wanted me to believe. No. Just another cover-up for a United States Marshal. He moves into this territory. And we're not through yet. There's still plenty of work for the deaf man. And what about Mr. McKenzie? Another United States Marshal who's taking chances, tall chances, this very minute. I hope nothing's happened to him. And so do I. I think I'll go outside and take a look around. I'm over here. You and Barton watch the herd till we get back. Come on, Red. Stay where you are. Chuck that gun. Follow your men. Captain, here are two prisoners I want you to hold for me. All right, Marshal. I'll lock them up.
Just a minute. Reach. Turn around. Where you're going, I'm going. And when you get there, you're saying, this is Mr. McKenzie. The boss wants him to take over from now on. In a different talk, you'll never finish it. Understand? All right. Davis and his men are at the bar. All right. Tell them to come in. All right. Who's this? This is Mr. McKenzie. The boss wants him to take over from now on. We got all the stock of the Circle J out here, and we're running late, so let's have the stuff. We want to get back before daylight. All right. But you tell Hartz this is the last stuff he's going to get until I get my cut for that other deal. I'll tell. I'll be over tomorrow night to see him. I'll tell him. Keeping Davis. What are we doing here before sun up? You and Shorty go out and spot Davis. Stop him. I don't want this deaf bird to see him. Bill, you know what to do. sure wouldn't want to be shut up on a nice morning like this, would he? No. What you say? Yeah, it's a nice morning. Yes, it is. I'll show you how to wrap these up. I don't want any of them broken. Speak a little clearer, will you? I said I'll show you how to wrap these up. I don't want any of them broken. Yeah. I'll be as careful as I can with them. Star pack up with the name McKinsey, cut in on us to Campino. I got out, but he's run me hog wild ever since. I just backtracked him before sunrise now. Come on, let's get out of here.
Put it over there. Perfect. Put it on that bench over there. What's the idea? Who's that? Harsh wanted to find out if Bonita's new driver is sure death. Satisfactory? Go ahead and wrap him. All right. I think I know how to do her now. Death, eh, Hopkins? Just as I thought. We knew you were tipping the stuff out, McGee, but we never figured out how until now. And I've been waiting a long while for you to make a mistake in your figuring, Marshal. And this is it. I'll give you one minute to come down with your hands up, or I'll drop your partner. Stay where you are. Get him up. Thank you, man. Move in. Step along, man. Your hunch was right, son. There's the stuff. Good. Now we can take him to town and pay Blackie a visit. All right, get moving. certainly learned a lot that's going to help me in the future, Nevada. Thanks. Ah, uh, you're going to be all right now, Joe. And I wish both of you all the luck and happiness in the world. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Mama D. Yes, yeah. Goodbye, Sandy. What'd you say? I said goodbye, Sandy. <laughs> I heard you the first time. Well, hasta la vista. Muy bien, gracias. Another thing else. Well, you know, this is about one of the trickiest assignments we've ever had, son. 
That's right, Sandy. Now you can go to that hotel of yours down in Texas and just sit tight. While I go home and find out if there's any news from Washington. And if there's not, I'm coming down there and stay a spell with you. What do you say, old-timer? Now, well, that's a mighty. But don't call me old-timer. <laughs> All right, Sandy. So long, Nevada. So long. So long.